uh, to order the regular meeting of the Elmhurst City Council for Monday, December 4th, 2023. I'd ask that you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Clerk Tamer, please call the roll. Hill. Here. Shanko. Here. Jensen. Here. Bram. Here. Cahill. Absent. Toledo. Here. Park. Here. Nudera. Here. Bastido. Here. Nardini. Here. Brennan. Here. Irby. Here. Deuter. Here. Remus. Here. 13 present, one absent. 13 present, one absent. We have a quorum. Um, we're going to proceed to a couple of presentations, item two on the, our agenda. And first, uh, we're, it's getting to be a, happily a regular occurrence that we have championship teams appearing before our city council. And once again, we're honored with the uh, 2023 York High School Lady Dukes Cross Country State Champions. And I'm going to ask their coaches to join me over by the podium here. Mm -hmm. we usually, well, good evening. All right, so uh, I've got with me head coach Lauren DeAngelis. Do you want to, uh, we want to acknowledge your assistant coaches, Jimmy Cole. You can stand up. And uh, Kelly Leonard. And if you guys, you can come up here, stand here too. Well, it's been quite a run for our uh, girl cross country team. They won state championship in 2021 and they placed second last year. It's always better to be first than second. So uh, this year is uh, back on top. Um, and uh, I'm going to let um, Coach DeAngelis tell us a little bit about the team and what's happened this year. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much for having us and honoring these amazing 14 um, girls. They have put in so much work and have sacrificed so much to make sure that they are holding each other to high expectations, performing at the highest level, and that um, does not go unnoticed. And they could not do it without being dedicated, without putting you know, this team first especially like June through for some of them. Yesterday was their concluding meet. Um, let's meet these amazing 14 girls. We are going to start with the seven alternates on the team. So if we could have Emma Owen stand, Sophia Stoddard, <laughs> Paige Byrne, Lila Stanley, Aria Shaw, Julia Westlow, and Kate Tanny was also on the team, but could not join us tonight. And let's meet the amazing seven girls who represented us at the state meet and beyond. We'll start with Gigi Hill, who finished in 49th place. Sophia Spoon Galliano Sanchez in 32nd. Maggie Quinn in 28th. And then earning all state honors, Anna McGrail, 21st. Earning all state honors, Michaela Quinn, 16th. Um, Maggie Owens, who could not be here, she earned all state honors in 12th place. She is on an amazing college visit in Santa Barbara. <laughs> I think we'd all rather be with her right now. And rounding out our top seven leading the team, on that day, Catherine Klimek in 11th place. Let's give these girls a huge round of applause. Yeah, yeah. This has been a tremendous team. They've built a strong foundation around each other because they love one another, they respect one another, and they want to work for one another. We are losing five amazing seniors who are leaving this program in 
or at its highest level with tons of high expectations that I know many girls will be able to um, come in and kind of help take over and lead teams to come. This has been an amazing, impressive season, winning that state championship team, and it did not come easy. These girls had a lot of different challenges thrown their way this year, um, and they always came back to their roots of being together and doing it for each other. Um, this team not only won the state meet, they had a regional title, they had a sectional title, they had a conference title. We have seven members of our team that earned all conference. We had four members earn all regional, and we had five members, I just wanna make sure I caught everyone, five members earning all sectional. Um, three of the girls have run on the varsity squad for four years who have been um, members of that top seven for a state championship, ZAM championship in 2000, the IHSA state championship 2021, the runner up in 2022, and then bringing home that state championship once again. Um, these girls, I, I can't say enough about them and the five amazing seniors. We are going to miss you so much and we know everyone sitting here coming back for future years is going to do amazing things. I also could not lead these girls without the help of my amazing assistants, Jimmy Cole and Kelly Leonard, and the support of the York administration, especially Rob Wagner sitting here, and all these amazing parents who provide so much support, especially a lot of humor and a lot of data diving so that we know exactly what we need to do every single meet. And of course, the community, the Elmhurst community is so supportive. I've grown up in Elmhurst and um, it's awesome to you know, see the Elmhurst community um, as a student athlete, but it's even more amazing to see it as an adult helping you know, lead and mentor these fine ladies. So thank you again for having us and one big round of applause for these girls. So I'm going to ask uh, assist the athletic director, Rob Wagner, to come up. It wouldn't be a city council meeting to honor a championship team without a proclamation. So here we are. Whereas participation in and support of sports and athletic achievement is an important part of your community high school's education in developing leadership skills and the creation of a tradition of excellence, Whereas York Community High School is home to the girls varsity cross country team led by coach Lauren DeAngelis, alongside assistant coaches Jimmy Kolb and Kelly Leonard. Whereas the York girls varsity cross country team capped off their 2023 season by taking first place at the IHSA state finals in the 3A division, bringing home their second state championship win in three years. And whereas in the postseason, the girls cross country team running as Croy cross country club took third place in the Nike cross regionals Midwest meet in Terre Haute, Indiana, and whereas the talented team earned an at-large bid to the Nike Cross Nationals in Portland, Oregon, where they placed 12th, and whereas the York girls varsity cross-country team's determination and teamwork led them to an exceptional season, and the team's success has been a great source of pride. See, I get choked up. For all of Elmhurst, now therefore I, Scott M. Levin, mayor of the city of Elmhurst, with great pride, congratulate the 2023 York Girls Varsity Cross Country Team on earning first place in the 2023 IHSA State Finals and do hereby proclaim December 4, 2023 as York Dukes Girls Cross Country Day. Well deserved. Uh, do you want to do a quick picture with everyone? Sure, All right. If you guys want to get up on the up on the stairs, then we'll take a quick picture. Losing <clears throat> my phones, I can't. Believe. Right. 
Oh. Got a wounded foot. Thank you very much. I'll be quick on that. Congratulations. Hey, good job. Thank you. Congratulations. Yes, I was Thank you. Okay, once again, uh, we congratulate the team. Uh, they just got back from Portland yesterday, so it's probably nap time. Um, <laughs> Thank you for the parents. Everyone come out. Once again, congratulations. Um, as much as I'm sure you want to stay, uh, we're going to take a, about a 30-second break, and it will take your leave. Thank you. Good evening. All right. Uh, we have one more presentation. Uh, we're going to be a recipient of the ILEAP designation award. And I'm going to ask, uh, well, we have uh, Chief Pat Kreese from Vernon Hills. And I'm going to turn it over to our own chief, McLean. All right. Um, so I just want to introduce uh, Chief Pat Kreese, who's the vice president of the Illinois Police Chiefs Association. The Illinois Chiefs Association oversees the accreditation program uh, for the state of Illinois. Um, that accreditation program uh, reviews every facet of police departments that submit themselves for assessment, which the Elmer's Police Department did. Uh, we were first accredited in 2018, and we were up for our reaccreditation this year. And uh, the Illinois Chiefs uh, um, Assessors looked at every facet of the organization, patrol, investigations, records, uh, administration, our training, um, they then interviewed officers to, uh, to make sure that they actually knew all of our policies and saw how we did business here in Elmhurst. And uh, we received a lot of great feedback uh, during our reaccreditation process. And I can't thank uh, the Illinois Chiefs and uh, the ILE assessors for all the, the work they did um, to do a deep dive into our organization. And uh, I, I will turn it over to you, Chief Kreese. Thank you for being here tonight. Of, of course. Thanks, Chief. Um, as uh, Chief McLean said, uh, my name is Patrick Kreese, and I'm, I'm, I'm here representing uh, President uh, Dr. Laura King, um, our current president of the Illinois uh, Chiefs of Police. And um, just, uh, again, uh, to highlight some of what uh, uh, Chief already mentioned, that in uh, early 21st century, the Illinois Chiefs sought uh, ways to help local police departments uh, demonstrate that they've achieved the highest levels of professional standards. This led to the creation of ILEAP, the Illinois Law Enforcement Accreditation Program. Uh, for ILEAP, we partnered 
the Illinois Chiefs partnered with several major organizations, such as the Illinois City County Management Association, the Illinois Criminal Justice Information Authority, Northwestern University Center for Public Safety, the Intergovernmental Risk Management Association, Illinois Law Enforcement Training and Standards Board, and others who are all part of the ILEAP Accreditation Council. This is the Illinois Accreditation Authority uh, in, in, uh, in Illinois. Today I'm here to congratulate Elmhurst Police Department for being accredited. It's important for us as a statewide association of publicly recognized departments that are doing well and embrace best practices. ILEAP is a program designed to be an administrative bulletproof vest this administrative armor was designed to reduce the risk and liability serving as a catalyst for professionalism uh, in the industry and soften the blow should a lawsuit or criticism come at the department, uh, even when best practices are followed. The Illinois Law Enforcement Accreditation Program aims to make police organizations um, better by evaluating police policy and procedures against established criteria, Cup coupling the alignment of policy and written directives against best practices in the, is the process of having those criteria certified by an independent authoritative body, the ILEAP Accreditation Council. The accreditation is ex significant for your police department, for your, your community, and for all of us in Illinois who are pushing for higher levels of police professionalism. Elmhurst Police Department has achieved Tier 1, which means you meet at least 69 important standards. We've reviewed your policies and procedures in context of these standards. We look at four major areas, administration, training, operations, and personnel. We brought in professional assessors to look at such critical policies, such as use of force, pursuit, record keeping, and community policing. To achieve accreditation is a rigorous process, taking many, many months for a department to demonstrate its compliance with the standards. So congratulations to Chief Mike McLean, and in particular his staff and Commander Steve Mandit for this great accomplishment. Only 69 Illinois agencies have achieved Illinois uh, Tier 1 accreditation since the program was launched more than 10 years ago. That's only about 5% of police departments in the state. So you can be sure you have a professional police department that's up to date with its policies and procedures. <coughs> the Illinois Chiefs of Police are very proud of the Elmhurst Police Department Chief Mike McLean on this accomplishment, and we believe you should be too. Thank you. I just want to say a couple uh, more words uh, towards the end here. I, I, I got to say, um, this would not have happened today without a lot of people coming together and some excellent teamwork. Uh, so first off, I'd, I'd like to thank uh, the accreditation team of the Elmer's Police Department uh, that was led by Commander Steve Mandat. Uh, he basically handled the, the uh, reaccreditation compiling all the proofs that were needed to show the assessors, not just that we do business um, at a high level when they're here, but we've done it for the past five years since our original accreditation. We proved that every single um, every single day uh, with, with the proof that we gave them. And I'd also like to thank uh, Deputy Chief Kazrowski. He oversaw our original accreditation in 2018, and uh, every member of the Elmer's Police Department had to pitch in and get this job done. Uh, so I'd like to thank them, and I'd also like to thank um, two more important entities: uh, the Elmer City Council. We wouldn't be here without your support and the community. Uh, the Elmer's community supports its police department. That support uh, drives us to work hard for them every day. Um, it's a synergy that leads to excellent policing. Uh, so I thank everybody in Elmer's for uh, this wonderful uh, reaccreditation. We couldn't do it without all of you. Congratulations, Chief.
All right, on with the business of the council. Um, item three is the public hearing on the tentative annual 2024 budget. All right, uh, there's a public hearing scheduled for this evening. The public hearing concerns the 2024 budget for the city of Elmhurst for the fiscal year January 1, 2024 through December 31, 2024. I call the public hearing to order at this point, uh, City Clerk, please call the roll. Let me get caught up. Hold on one second. Uh, Hill? Here. Shanko? Here. Jensen? Here. Bram? Here. Cahill? Absent. Toledo? Here. Park? Here. Nudera? Here. Bastido? Here. Nardini? Here. Brennan? Here. Kirby? Here. Deuter? Here. Varimus? Here. 13 present, one absent. 13 present, one absent. We have a uh, quorum for the public hearing. The purpose of this public hearing is to take public comment concerning the 2024 budget. I would ask the city clerk, are there any written comments concerning the 2024 budget? No, Mayor. All right. Uh, would any members of the public like to make any comments for the record? If so, please raise your hand. Uh, all right. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? Alderman Bastido, seconded by Alderman Brennan. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. The hearing is closed. And that's how you run a meeting. <laughs> All right, thank you. That's a formality that's required for us to go through in case any member of the public wants to submit comment. Um, we are now proceeding to a receipt of written communication from the public. Is there any member of the public who has a written communication that he or she would like to deliver to the council? If so, please raise your hand. Seeing none, we'll move on to public forum. Item five is, uh, Clerk Tamer, has anyone signed up this evening to, for public forum? No, Mayor. All right, and is there any member of the public who did not have an opportunity to sign in for public forum but would like that opportunity at this point? If so, please raise your hand. Seeing none, we'll move on to announcements. Item six, are there any announcements from the dais? Alderman Toledo. No announcement other than I would like to acknowledge and thank our young students who are in the audience tonight for being here. I believe Fenwick has a government course as why you're here, but welcome. And um, I'm sure if you have any questions after the meeting, anyone up here would be happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, we're moving on to item seven, the consent agenda. Clerk Tamer, please read the consent agenda. 7.1 minutes of the executive session meeting of the Elmer City Council on November 6, 2023. 7.2 minutes of the executive session meeting of the Elmer City Council on November 20, 2023. 7.3 minutes of the Committee of the Whole meeting of the Elmer City Council on November 13, 2023. 7.4 minutes of the regular meeting of the Elmer City Council on November 20th, 2023. 7.5 minutes of the Committee of the Whole meeting of the Elmer City Council on November 27th, 2023. 7.6 accounts payable December 4th, 2023, $1,678,682.10. 7.7 report property workers' compensation Inland Marine Crime and Cyber Insurance Renewal. Renewal. 7.8, a resolution approving the extension of the water supply contract between the DuPage Water Commission and the City of Chicago. 7.9, downtown plan contract in scope with Housio Levine Associates and KLOA. 7.10, a resolution approving a collective bargaining agreement between the City of Elmhurst and Elmhurst Professional Firefighters. Association 7.11, a resolution regarding the release of certain closed session minutes. 7.12, an ordinance for the levy and assessment of taxes for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2023 and ending December 31st, 2023 of the City of Elmhurst, DuPage and Cook Counties, Illinois. 7.13, an ordinance for the levy and assessment of taxes for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2023 and ending December 31st, 2023 
in and for special service area number six in the city of Elmhurst, 7.14, an ordinance for the levy and assessment of taxes for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2023 and ending December 31st, 2023, in and for special services area number 13 of the city of Elmhurst, 7.15, an ordinance for the levy and assessment of taxes for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2023 and ending December 31st, 2023 in and for special services area number 16 of the city of Elmhurst. 7.16, an ordinance abating the tax levy for the year 2023 for the payment of principal and interest accruing upon an issue of 9,375,000 general obligation bonds, series 2014B and the city <coughs> of Elmhurst dated November 4th, 2014. 7.17, abating the tax levy for the year 2023 for the payment of principal and interest accruing upon an issue of $16 million general obligation corporate purpose bonds, series 2015 of the city of Elmhurst dated July 1st, 2015. 7.18, an ordinance abating the tax levy for the year 2023 for the payment of principal and interest accruing upon an issue of 25 million general obligation corporate purpose bonds, series 2016, of the City of Elmer's dated June 22, 2016. 7.19, an ordinance abating the tax levy for the year 2023 for the payment of principal and interest accruing upon an issue of 6,770,000 general obligation refunding bonds, series 2017A of the City of Elmer's dated June 20, 2017. 7.20, an ordinance abating the tax levy for the year 2023 for the payment of principal and interest accruing upon an issue of 9,615,000 general obligation bonds, series 2017B of the City of Elmer's dated August 1, 2017. 7.21, an ordinance abating the tax levy for the year 2023 for the payment of principal and interest accruing upon an issue of 9,715,000 general obligation bonds, series 2018 of the City of Elmer dated December 5th, 2018. 7.22, an ordinance abating the tax levy for the year 2023 for the payment of principal interest accruing upon an issue of 9,925,000 general obligation bonds, series 2019 of the City of Elmer dated <coughs> December 30th, 2019. 7.23, an ordinance abating the tax levy for the year 2023 for the payment of principal and interest accruing upon an issue of 9,570,000 general obligation bonds, series 2021 of the City of Elmhurst dated April 29, 2021. 7.24, an ordinance approving a water purchase and sale contract with the, between the DuPage Water Commission and the City of Elmhurst. Thank you, Clerk Tamer. Is there any item on the consent agenda that any alderman would like to remove, either for further discussion or to vote against? Alderman Toledo. 7.7. 7.7. Anyone else? All right, may I have a motion to approve the consent agenda minus item 7.7. .7. Alderman Doyle with a motion. Alderman Nudera with a second. Clerk Tamer. Hill? Aye. Shanko? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Graham? Aye. Cahill? Absent. Toledo? Aye. Park? Aye. Nudera? Aye. Bastido? Aye. Nardini? Aye. Brennan? Aye. Irby? Aye. Deuter? Aye. Varimus? Aye. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. The consent agenda minus item 7.7 .7 is approved. Clerk Tamer, please read the report for 7.7. .7. It is therefore the recommendation of the Finance, Council Affairs, and Administrative Services Committee that the City Council accept the 2024 insurance renewal package. Signed, Noel P. Toledo, Chair, Chris Jensen, Vice Chair, and James Nudera, Nudera and Rex Irby, Alderman. We have a motion to approve 7.7. .7. Alderman... Toledo, second, Alderman Jensen, Alderman Toledo. Thank you. Just briefly, I wanted to pull this. Um, just for those aldermen who have served for some time, we're very familiar with a, our insurance broker being called Assurance. Um, Assurance was acquired by Marsh McLennan Agency, MMA, and that was denoted in the report. I just wanted to, to make everyone aware of that um, it's the same company, same representatives, um, getting the same great service from our insurance broker, but they do have a new name moving forward. And then I'll just say that uh, while it's unfortunate, as we know, most people's insurances tend to go up year over year. Um, thankfully, we do have this increase budgeted within our budget, um, and it is a responsible report and a responsible insurance package. Thank you. 
Thank you, Alderman Toledo. Any other discussion on 7.7? .7? Kirk Tamer, call the roll. Hill? Aye. Shanko? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Bram? Aye. Cahill? Absent? Toledo? Aye. Park? Aye. Nudera? Aye. Bastido? Aye. Cardini? Aye. Brennan? Aye. Irby? Aye. Deuter? Aye. Veremus? Aye. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. Item report 7.7 .7 is adopted. Um, moving on to <coughs> reports and recommendations of appointed elected officials, Mayor Levin. Um, three or four announcements. First, I want to give uh, thanks to the Don Gibbons Turkey Trot for Dan Smith, Don, I don't know, <laughs> and all the city staff for a successful event on Thanksgiving. Uh, it's become a premier, continues to be a premier event for the city of Elmhurst, and I think we all enjoyed it. Um, a lot of volunteers on that. Item two, the Holly Trolley is rolling every Saturday, noon to midnight, from now through December 30th. Uh, fire dis department stations one and two are drop-off locations for Toys for Tots. And lastly, the mitten tree is up at City Hall taking donations of hats, mittens, gloves, and scarves to be donated to those in need. I have earmuffs, they're not listed, but I'll bring them in anyway. That's all for me, City Manager. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, one announcement, we received word today from the tollway of some uh, overnight uh, road and ramp closures that are scheduled to begin next week on North Avenue and on Lake Street uh, for the uh, Tri-State or I-294 um, area to accommodate bridge beam placement. So those will be overnight closures <coughs> of full stops. We're getting the word out to um, everyone via our website, social media. We'll send it to the council as well. Uh, but I just want everybody to be aware of that. They are gonna put construction signage and electronic message boards up in advance so people are aware of that. And they will happen overnight, if I didn't say that before, uh, generally from after uh, midnight until about 5 a.m. Thank you, City Manager. Are there any other um, reports from elected officials? All right. Is there other business? Is there any other business to be brought before the council this evening? Seeing none, Alderman Irby. Uh, thank you, Mayor. The uh, American Legion Hall is having a um, aluminum can drive to sponsor quite a bit of their annual uh, programming and support financially. It's a uh, trailer that you can walk up to on the, uh, it's, it's on the south side of Elmhurst in my ward, uh, the American Legion Hall again. And you can walk up anytime and drop your cans off. Apparently aluminum cans have a good value right now, higher than we've seen in the past. And so if, if, if we can get everybody to go over there who has cans instead of, if they, if they have the time to drop them off, that'd be great. Help their programming for the year. Thank you. Thank you. Any other reports? <clears throat> All right. Uh, motion to adjourn. <laughs> Alderman to Second, Alderman Brennan. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you. Have a good night.